Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. And welcome back to my shop. So in last week's video, we started designing some custom storage for this drawer in my Kennedy chest. And I have mostly taper tooling in here. There's a bunch of other junk in the back of the drawer too. But the biggest issues I was trying to solve were keeping the tapers on these safes since they're precision ground and I didn't want them to knock into each other. And it's just really nice to have a, a spot for everything. I mean, if you want to stay organized, a key is really having a spot that everything goes into and then putting those things back in their spots when you're done. And I've used this already quite a bit this week, and it's been really nice to just come in here, grab what I need, know that it's got a place to go back into, and that it is safe. So the obvious elephant in the room is this pipe center down here that unfortunately does not fit into our standard modular design that worked for the other six pieces of tooling. And these actually, uh, these are six individual prints. They all lock together. They also lock underneath the front lip of the drawer so they can't slide out of place. If you missed last week's video, go check that out. I will link that down in the description of this week's video. But when I left off in that video, I asked you guys for uh, some ideas down in the comments for how do we deal with this pipe center. And you guys left me a bunch of great ideas down in the comment section of last week's video of what to do with this guy. And the comment that I saw come up, I think at least three times was basically uh, design something that this guy just drops straight down into and maybe have a nice finger hole to grab it as well. And I like that. I think that's what we're going to do. And I think we've got plenty of space over here to do it. I've been scratching my head trying to think about uh, ways to cheat or other ways to easily do this. And I keep coming back to, I think the best thing to do is to basically model this pipe center and then actually take that model and drop it into the shape of, uh, you know, the piece that's gonna fit over here and essentially subtract that from the solid piece. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to model this and get sort of a basic idea for you know, sort of what shape we can subtract that from that should lock into these other guys, also lock underneath the front of the drawer. And we can come up a little bit further too, because this guy's not gonna have to be pulled out. So we don't want any clearance in that direction. So the base will probably come up to, I don't know, maybe close to the end of the length of uh, the ER40 collet holder here next to it. So, all right, I'm gonna go draw that up and I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, I got this modeled up here and I think it's pretty darn close. I measured all the diameters. I'm sure that they're accurate. The things that are a little bit tough are some of these different steps with the, uh, with the, the radius corners and the spread between these. It was difficult to get some of the measurements. I suppose I could have taken this fastener out of the end, uh, put this face down on the surface plate and gotten all these measurements just perfect. But I mean, I think for the application of just trying to create a negative space for this guy to rest into, that this is probably good enough. So the next thing I did was then rotate it down into this position. I didn't actually model it on its side like this. I modeled it straight up and down and then rotated it into this position because the bottom edge here, the bottom most point here and the bottom most point here are now on the same plane because that's how it has to sit in the drawer. We know from testing that if we stand this guy up so that uh, this edge here is equal to our red axis here, that this sits up too high. It has got to sit down here on this edge and this edge to clear the drawer opening. And I think we only had maybe, I don't know, two or three millimeters. So I know we don't have a lot of extra space to work with. Uh, I then took this geometry and duplicated it and created an extended and elongated version of the geometry that we had in last week's design for each one of those modules. Uh, flattened out the top of it, got rid of the entry point for the taper. And if I hide this, you can see I then basically just subtracted the geometry from, um, from this chunk of material here. And for the taper, I opened it up at the top and I actually made this section not really tapered. So this is, uh, the taper is gonna get thinner down here and this is still gonna be wide open. I did that just so there's plenty of room to drop this in. I don't wanna have to come in at the perfect angle where we come in from like up here and drop it in like this and have to line up this and this at the same time. We can't go straight down because we do, the taper from this is gonna come back past uh, this line here, but we'll be able to drop it in and I think kind of rotate it in place in one smooth motion. So, all right, I'm gonna stop here. As tempting as it is to keep going on this and get all the dimensions on this part to be exactly what we want for the finished design, we really need to figure out if uh, that pipe center is actually gonna fit into our cutout here first and if it's gonna be awkward to try and pick up. So, all right, let's print this out and I'll bring you back. All right, and our test piece is completed and this came out pretty nice. One thing I did notice looking at it, uh, the surface finish down here is pretty rough in places and it's super nice up here. And this is actually our overhang. This printed standing up like this. I think what happened is I just did not have enough density on the infill. 
uh, and or enough top layers. I mean, this was, I did this very, very draft quality. I just wanted to get out as quickly as possible to see if we were close with the shape. Uh, so I have to remember that when we do our final print on this to make sure that I have the infill cranked up a bit more and we do a couple extra top layers. But let's see how this fits. Yeah, it's not bad. Seems to maybe rock a little bit in there. That might actually just be extra clearance down here on the taper because it doesn't really seem like this part at the top moves at all. And it looks like it's sitting down in there pretty good. Let's see, our tail comes down pretty close to the back, but we should still have plenty of clearance. We could even come back a little bit further with the, um, uh, the cutout for the tool if we needed to. Let's see how it looks in the drawer. Huh, what is going on? Why is that not? You see that it's like springing up. It's not actually sitting all the way straight in there. Oh, uh, you know what it is? There is, you guys can't see this, but there is, there's a piece of sheet metal from the side uh, that comes over and I need to cut out a clearance for that. Basically, I need a small amount of clearance on this edge uh, on the back. I actually forgot about that on this module over here too. And in fact, I didn't show you guys that on last week's video. I ended up uh, just going across my router table. Uh, knocking off this edge and I forgot about it for this one too. So, all right, well, that's one design change we'll need to make. We'll need a relief back here for that. Otherwise, I think that fits well. And I think I want to go a little bit longer. I came to about where I said, but it sort of looks a little short, just where the nose is sitting. And I wasn't sure how I was actually going to grab this out of here. You might think that it would make sense to have finger holes here, but this thing is so heavy at the front edge, I actually think that the way to grab it is going to be like this. So it might be nice to extend this a little bit and then also have a finger hole cut out so that you can get your finger underneath, like basically like in this area here. All right, I'm going to take all those things into consideration and go come up with a revised design. I think we could probably nix uh, the dovetail on this side. We don't need it. We'll do a recess back here to clear that sheet metal where it's folded in and welded at the corner. And probably shift the whole thing back this way a little bit because we had some extra space at the rear. We'll extend the front, get a finger hole in there. And I guess we're also going to need to design a custom uh, dovetail lock piece for this because this dovetail extends way further up and this prints in this orientation. So I don't want to just stop the dovetail because we won't have a clean end to it. So maybe we'll just design a custom piece that acts as like a filler for up here and then back where this parallels this um, locks in. All right, and our updated part is complete. And I made all the changes we talked about. Uh, the one in the back here came out kind of rough because of course this did need supports under it printing like this, but that's all right. We're never gonna see that. As long as we have enough clearance for that sheet metal at the end of the drawer, it is good. And I'm uh, really curious to see how this works out for, uh, for picking it up. Yeah, that's perfect. You guys probably can't see, but that's lets you get your index finger all the way down underneath the cone and pick it up very easily, just like that. And we are a little bit closer to the back. Let's go see how this one fits. Yeah, that's not pushing up off the bottom of the drawer anymore, so that is good. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Now this is lifting up because we do not have it keyed into that other piece yet. So let's see if we can get this guy pushed in. Sure, it looks lined up, but it's not going in. Oh, there we go. All right, and it is flush. Oh yeah, that's perfect. 
With it locked together to all of the other modules, now the weight of all these is holding down all of its neighboring pieces. So like I can't lift this up because it's tied to everything else here in the row. So as long as there's at least one or two tools in place, it basically keeps everything from shifting when you're, you know, you're pulling out or putting back in one of the other tools. All right, well, the next thing to do is figure out what we're going to do in the rest of the drawer. And I don't think we'd need to do much custom here. I think we can reuse the designs that we have from the other drawers. Uh, in fact, actually, I was going to pull one of these, um, these shallow ones out to try it, uh, to see how that works from a height perspective behind these guys. See how close we can get. But you know what? Actually, this, this should probably be down in this drawer. Uh, everything else in here is really drill bits. I mean, I guess there's a test bar and an alignment bar in here too, but this stuff is really closer to what's in here. They're dead centers and Morse taper adapters. So maybe we'll kind of treat this guy as the anchor tenant. I'll put you back in the tripod. What I'm trying to figure out is like if I have this say here, is it in the way when I go to pull this out? And it's not. This is low enough that the angle I come up with with this, I don't hit it. Now, if we go higher, I think we will bump into it. So if we want to go taller than this, we would need to start back further, but I don't think we need to. I mean, even though this is a deep drawer, we really only needed that depth for up here and we could have taller stuff. We just need to make sure that it is either all the way over here to the right or towards the back of the drawer and the dividers will still stop it from moving. So I'm thinking that we have this guy here and then um, like this is going to be too tall but just for the sake of how to fill out the rest of the drawer. I'll have to see what I have left to go in here and see if it makes sense to have like four pot compartments or three pot compartments. And we are gonna need something custom for over here because this width is different. I guess technically this probably doesn't land at the natural end point of one of our other designs either. So we'll probably need to either lengthen or shorten the last piece like this that we have over here and then design a custom one that fits this gap over here in front of the pipe center. So I'm going to go full around with all the different designs because I have all these designs uh, in SketchUp uh, that I can just kind of put them in front of these in the drawer virtually and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go do that and I'll bring you guys back. So I get asked in the comments all the time what I do with my 3D printed prototype parts. And unfortunately the answer is they go in the garbage. And if you guys are doing something different, I'd love to hear about it. I know there's a bunch of hobby projects out there for shredding these things up and turning them back into filament, but I think that's really all they are, is just hobby projects. I don't think it makes sense uh, at an at-home level to try and shred these up and turn them back into filament. I think you're gonna spend more uh, time and energy doing that than is worth it. Even if we take the time away, I think even just the energy consumption and the materials that you're gonna consume to try and recycle that, I don't know, 140 grams of plastic, it just doesn't make it worth it. Not to mention, you'd have to get this guy really clean before you shredded it up to try and turn it back into filament. That piece looked clean when I dropped it in there, but I guarantee you if we took a close look at it, we'd find uh, small chunks of probably sawdust, uh, metal shavings, and just other general grit and grime from around the shop uh, that it has picked up, just you know, moving it around the shop for uh, a couple of days. So. Again, let me know down in the comments if you're doing something different. I would love to do something other than throw it in the circular file here, but I just don't have any other viable alternatives right now. All right, those pieces are all done. Let's go back over to the drawer and see how everything fits. Okay, so I think this one goes here, if I'm not mistaken. This one definitely goes all the way over here at the end. This one is actually the replacement for the one that we stole out of this drawer. And last but not least, this guy goes right here. All right, that looks really good. We still have to solve what we're gonna do down here underneath these tools. We could 3D print something. I guess it would have to be two or three prints because that's a pretty long space but I don't want to lose any space under it. When I reach in to grab these, my fingers are basically going all the way down to the bottom of the drawer. So whatever we put here has to be thin, but I guess enough, substantial enough that these don't slide. I think I have more of this, uh, this blue anti-static mat material. I could cut that up and fit it in there. Let me measure that. Let's try a piece of that. 
All right, I've got a scrap piece of this from another project. It's definitely long enough and yeah, it's about an inch wider than we need. So this will work. And if you're wondering why I'm using anti-static mat for my toolbox drawers, years ago I came across a roll of this stuff on Amazon priced at like 60 bucks. And I came across it because I was looking for just a small piece of this, one probably about this long and maybe three times longer in this direction. And that piece would normally cost about 40 to $60. So I was confused as to why there'd be an entire roll uh, listed for 60 bucks. So I bought it figuring, you know, can return it if uh, it turns out to be like a miniature model of a roll or something. But no, uh, a hundred plus pound giant roll of this stuff arrived at my door for 60 bucks. I don't know who screwed up, but I've been using this stuff for everything. I think that'll work for now. It's uh, it's not sitting completely flat in there. I guess it's going to take some time to see if it ends up curling more with these guys pushing against it from just the drawer opening and closing, or if it ends up sort of sitting flat down in there. But we could always just 3D print some, you know, two or three millimeter uh, thick flat pieces to fit down there and accomplish the same thing. So, all right, let's get this drawer filled out. All right, well that is everything out of here. So everything that was originally in the drawer. And there's also a bunch of stuff in here that was in other drawers too. Like these deburring tools were in a different drawer. These guys were all in this drawer up here. So I think that is a much better use of space in this drawer. Guys, I think we're done with this drawer. And I'm really happy with how it looks. I think this is a much better use of the space in this drawer than what was going on before with the stock Kennedy divider. And uh, these guys are far safer in here like this than how they were stored in the drawer before. And I gotta say, this blue is really growing on me. I like the contrast of the blue behind the, uh, the, the shiny uh, Morse taper tooling in here. So hopefully that ends up sitting nice and flat down in there and we don't have to change it out because I like it. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's design and video. It's always nice having you guys along. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's all functional prints. A lot of stuff out here in the shop, uh, but I do stuff in the house and out in the yard as well. So if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into 3D printing for more of the design and engineering and functional aspect of it versus just you know, whatever custom benchy someone designed. Uh, yeah, check out some other videos on the channel. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.